Okay, uh, as quick as I can. This is about passive DNS. Uh, some of you have heard about that. You haven't heard about ISC Security Information Exchange, which is why I am here to talk to you. So um, I'll explain how DNS can be passive. If you have a recursive name server on your network and you ask it, or one of your customers most likely, asks it something it doesn't know, it will forward that query upstream and eventually get an answer back, which it will keep in its cache in case it gets asked that question again. It will also forward the response back to the original person. Passive DNS consists of tapping into the flow of responses coming from upstream, coming from authority servers like the .com servers or the google.com servers or whatever, toward your recursive name servers, tapping into that and analyzing it in some way. Um, since it's a lightning talk, the only important thing here is there's no personally identifiable information. The IP address of the client is not known. Uh, we only see server-to-server -server traffic, and of course we do not see any reuse. Any of the, the times that the cache is hit uh, will not be noticed by passive DNS because it's below us. Um, what can you do? Uh, these are things I've seen done. Um, so, for example, if you know that a given IP address belongs to a command and control server for a botnet, and you see it coming through as the A record or quad A record for some new domain name, then you might learn the new domain name of a new botnet before you, it has been seen or used elsewhere. Uh, similar kinds of tricks. Um, I know that uh, in April Lawrenson's work, she has found a lot of uh, bad, uh, like child pornography sites, by simply looking at who their name servers are, because um, bad sites tend to all cluster together around a certain set of name servers that they then move around several times a day. Uh, so by looking at uh, new name servers having the same addresses as known bad name servers or vice versa, you can sort of watch the fast flux name servers moving around and watch the domains that use them before they are seen in phishing attacks or spam or whatever. So. And it turns out to just be extremely useful to see all in one place data that is otherwise uh, not um, uh, not concentrated. It's you know, the data that I see at my recursive name server all by itself is useless, but if you put it all together, it's um, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Florian came up with this. I think he got a master's uh, thesis out of it, and um, I know that the law enforcement community loves his work. They are very interested in knowing for a given IP address what is its history, what other names has it had, um, or, or uh, for a given domain name that perhaps does not allow zone transfer, uh, can they look at other similar names that are held in the same zone? Uh, it's been very useful for prosecution of cybercrime. Um, so again, I'm trying to burn through this as quick as I can to leave time for questions. Um, we have asked April to look into a passive DNS implementation that would be based on uh, SQL. Uh, Florian's work is very interesting, but it was written in GNU Ada, and it uses Berkeley DB. Florian himself wants to try that. They both have uh, computers in the, net, in the rack where you can see the passive DNS data that we're currently, uh, currently collecting. Um, so there are more passive DNS efforts in the world than the ones I've mentioned. Um, I know that, um, uh, I don't want to mention them by name, but there are various people that are doing it, and they all have to start by getting together a group of sensors. They'll call their buddy who runs an ISP or is responsible for the university network and say, could you put this passive DNS sensor into your recursive name server so that I may study your data. And if they know enough people, then they can get enough data that they can either make their research project work or they can start to build their system. Um, I was concerned about that because I wanted it to be possible to do this kind of good work without having your first task be to assemble a sensor network. So what we have uh, tried to do is contact sensors and say, if you share it with us, then we will be the last person you hear from because I will then share it in turn with other trusted people. Uh, nobody who is running an ISP name server is going to be willing to run more than one passive DNS sensor on it. Um, it's also 
uh, important that when you're sharing this data, you do not share it with people who might want to spam you uh, because this is a, a, a data mining, I guess a gold mine, a data gold mine uh, for people who want to learn about you. So, uh, I mean, I know that we're, you're all perfectly comfortable letting Google know who you are and what you do and what you buy and where you travel and everything like that, but uh, turning that around and doing the same thing for uh, passive DNS would be a mistake. Um, as a trusted nonprofit myself, I was hoping we could help. So we wrote some software uh, similar to PCAP, uh, but it tolerates fragmentation and reassembly a little better. Uh, we have a sensor that um, basically just collects a bunch of traffic and SCPs it up to the, the mothership every couple of minutes. Um, we have this collector infrastructure that has a local LAN that we just rebroadcast the data onto that LAN so that different passive DNS projects all see the data in real time with no embargo. Um, and see here. What I'm hoping you will do is to take the role of uh, being a sensor operator. I'm hoping that uh, many people in this room are running recursive name servers and would not mind if I tapped into the data that the authority name servers of the world send you in response to your forwarded queries. Uh, send me email, vixie at isc.org, if you think you would be willing to do that. Uh, we have about seven or eight people doing it now. Um, I'm interested in seven or eight hundred. Uh, we have probably about five megabits right now around the clock of collected data being rebroadcast. I'd like to get that over a gigabit by springtime. Um, so we need more data. And this is really just the first channel of many. Um, the, the example of passive DNS uh, is it, it fits the description of things that look better in daylight than by flashlight. Uh, if you can see all the data at once, then you can really characterize it as opposed to only seeing clearly that which you point your flashlight at and therefore new to look at. So uh, if we could sim uh, similarly centralize things like, oh, I don't know, spam rejection notices, SSH login failures, things like that, then uh, someone sitting at the center of the funnel uh, would have, an, uh, have the ability to tell the difference between a typographical error and an outright uh, attack or a scan or something like that, dictionary attack. And that's it, so questions? We have three or four minutes for questions. Yeah. No questions? I have a question. Um, if, I if people don't mind being embarrassed for a second. Um, would anybody here quite happily go and just, by a show of hands, go and run an instrumented recursive name server and actually do this? Raise your hands. We have a couple. You don't have to run an instrumented name server. This works fine on Microsoft DNS servers or Power DNS or NSD or anything else. You it does not have to be bind. This is not a bind patch. Okay, that's it. Let's let's move on to the next uh, presenter. Thank Thanks very much, Paul.